Bourbon Wine Tribe. It is your boy JM, the corner store wine connoisseur, and we are here for another episode of Urban Wine Tribe TV. Wine is not only my passion, but it's my vehicle. With just a little bit of imagination, wine can take you as close to the soil, some of the most beautiful lands in all of the world. From the seat of your couch, bar stool, patio chair, you can travel to some of the most beautiful places in the world like the mystical rainforest of New Zealand, the dangerous, earthy, fiery, volcanic mountains in the Andes Mountains of Argentina, to a very quaint, small, family-owned, farm on the countryside of Oregon. What about time travel? Because it appeals to your sense of sight, taste, and smell, wine can lock in moments in time in your brain that will allow you not only to remember vivid descriptions of the wine, but also of the food you're eating, of the people you're with, and the places you're at. Y'all ready to get the show started? Oh yeah. Y'all ready to get the show started? There's really not that many people in here, but the acoustics makes it sound like this place is rocking. So today's menu is sponsored by Vegan Innovations. That's at vegan underscore innovations on Instagram. For tonight's menu, we are starting with the mini empanadas with mixed mushrooms. Then we are going to a blueberry medley salad with a balsamic vinaigrette. Then we're going to try some smoked oyster mushrooms over crostinis. And we're going to finish with a tres leches uh, rice cake pudding. For the wines today, we're going to go with a 90 plus rosé from France. We're going with a Matua Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand. And finally, we are going to finish with a Hot 44 Malbec from Argentina. Before we get the show started, my man Bump's going to provide some sounds for us. He's going to set the vibe. Yo, Bump, give us up. This reminds me of a song I used to know Almost every day up on the radio I swear I hear it click coming from down the hall Sounds like a sick party bouncing off the wall But I wasn't invited I wasn't invited So why am I so excited? Yeah. I wasn't invited But I'm going anyway I got a case, I got a bottle Plus I'm fly, look like a model Bet they smell like gas a mile away I came to party, fuck them problems I don't know no one without them Worked all week, but now it's time to One time for the DJ one time for the DJ Just do what he say Just do what he say One time for the DJ This reminds me of a song I used to know Almost every day up on the radio I swear I hear it click coming from down the hall Sounds like a sick party bouncing off the wall But I wasn't invited wasn't invited, no. so why am I so excited? Yeah. I wasn't invited, no. but I'm going anyway. I got a case, I got a bottle, plus I'm fly, look like a model. Bet they smell like gas a mile away. I came to party, fuck them problems. I don't know no one without them. Worked all week, but now it's time one to One time for the DJ. Reminds me of a song I used to know Almost every day up on the radio I swear I hear it click coming from down the hall Sounds like a sick party bouncing off the wall But I wasn't invited no. I wasn't invited no. So why am I so excited? Yeah. I wasn't invited but I'm going anyway
Alright, showtime. So today we're starting off with a rosé. We have the 90 plus rosé from France. Very popular. You can get this at a lot of stores. Um, this is uh, rosés are just so very easy to pair, so very, um, so very uncomplicated and friendly. Um, they range like the very serious rosés for me are very floral, very perfumey, very intoxicating. Um, the funner rosés are more cotton candy, bubble gum, you know, and then somewhere in the middle you get some nice peach, watermelon, grapefruit, and rosés. So that's what you're looking for. I mean, the the color doesn't lie. Right, yeah. so you know anything that resembles that shade, whether it's cherry, whether it's uh, p white peach, whether it's you know um, again, pink is a very delicate uh, color, and like flowers, you know, flowers are also delicate. So there's there's a lot of parallels that can help you um, with your wine pairings, especially with your rosés. Before we get too deep into the wine, today's show is sponsored by Vegan In Innovations. The, the most genius part about what I do is that I get to pick the people that I work with, you know, and um, I'm sorry, without proper introduction, so this is Josh and Melanie. Melanie is my cousin. Josh is her husband. Uh, it's cool that I get to have you guys to yeah. join me and hang out. This is and this, awesome. is, this is what it's all about, you know what I mean? Picking who you surround yourself with. And of course, Bump Pro gave us a, an awesome performance to start Bump is super cool um we met uh, a few months ago and we just hit it off right away just has a good vibe and i really really dig his music um so again super dope to have you know like you know it, how, how this comes together right? right next also uh, a part of the family uh, one of my closest cousins growing up uh him and his wife uh, adopted a new lifestyle something that's very popular nowadays and uh, about you know uh, about improving your health and your lifestyle uh, so we are going to invite Vegan Innovations, my cousin Jason, his wife Laura, please uh, please come join us. So we are here with my cousins Laura and Jason. They are starting their own vegan platform called Vegan Innovations. That's correct. Yeah, that's at vegan underscore innovations. Yeah. Um, they are sponsoring uh, this episode. Thank you so much. Thank you for having uh, us. Thank you. My, my pleasure, my pleasure. So in case you haven't figured it out, I am not vegan. I know that. Um, you mentioned yes. that earlier. Yeah. You say no matter what, vegan, you're still going to eat your meat? That's right. Um, that's right. Uh, that, that's, but that doesn't mean I still want to incorporate healthier options into it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And, and that's where I want to develop the knowledge. So how, how did you guys get into this vegan lifestyle? Because you weren't always this way. Well, we started, uh, I was sick. I was sick in and out of the hospital. And, um, um, what were you, my, may I ask, what, and would you mind sharing what was, uh, what were you sick from? I was uh, suffering from congestive heart, heart failure, kidney failure, and um, it's currently being reversed um, little by little. And also uh, her with her emphysema that's being reversed, and um, lots of fruits, lots of veggies. You know? Yeah. And, um, uh, you, well, you're saying that. So, how many, how many, how many years have you been uh, going completely vegan? Um, it's gonna be three years now. Three for years me. completely vegan for, for me. You was no, no, not for me. For me, three okay. years. And yeah. She's a uh, couple months vegan. Six now. months now. Wow, wow. That's Six incredible. months now. Yes. That's incredible. So well, let's uh, let's talk about what we have here. Um, let's start with the empanadas. That'll be me. Yes, please. Yes. Yeah, this is your so, cue. <laughs> yes. So we have some empanadas. Um, I grew up with the Dominican seasoning, with the Dominican flavors. And um, of course I could incorporate different kind of uh, meals with the same flavors and the same sazon and adobo and all of that stuff. No more adobo, but we still have something more familiar to it. Okay. The sopitas, uh, which is the, the cubes. Yeah, okay. Yes, the cubes. and we tomatoes and we do sofritos, we also cilantro. So we now we have the uh, the vegan empanadas and they have mushrooms, they have multiple mushrooms in there, mixed mushrooms. Also um, it has um, uh, some some nice house sauce that I created myself which is going to be part, we're going to be uh, putting that up very soon in the web which is 
This tastes like traditional beef empanadas. You can taste the Dominican? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, it's the vegan. olive. It's the olive. It's vegan and it's healthy. 90% healthy because the 10% would be the oil. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. it is uh, fried. I didn't want to make it big today because I wanted, wanted you to enjoy it since you're not vegan. <laughs> <laughs> so, how does it taste? What do you think? Delicious. It tastes like a real empanada. Yeah. Uh, sauce, real empanada. The sauce is doesn't, doesn't a traditional. Right. <laughs> it tastes like a traditional Spanish empanada that yeah. I grew up with. Wow. So let's talk about the Christines. Yes, so um, for your show, I wanted to be a little fancy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I put don't together. <laughs> I put together. <laughs> We're not fancy, just so you know. I don't know if you know this. Fancy, <laughs> no, but you can mix right. it. Okay. Yeah, I have yeah, a yeah. combination of everything. Right, right, you right, know, right, right. never know. Mm -hmm. Everything comes out better. So we have um, crostini with um, broiled smoke. Um, oyster mushrooms wow. with a pesto sauce actually a pesto sauce that I created different from the regular pesto sauce because pesto has cheese so I twisted the pesto and I added cilantro and I added some of the herbs that are Dominican and that are Spanish you know so you still have the Dominican flavor and the Spanish flavors I also made of uh, a cheese of uh, cashew cheese so I have I put that as on the top as you can see it um, it's very good, you just have to try it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying not to be too so anxious. Everybody, please dig in. Yes. Thank you. So, oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms, yeah, with a pesto and smoke, and smoke liquids. Where, where, are, where are oyster mushrooms? What does that mean? Oh, that's the name of the mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> so I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All because the consistency is very similar to oysters. Yeah. <laughs> it's the shape oh, of the yes. mushroom too. It has an oyster looking shape. The too. consistency oh, is a little yeah. very, you know. With the rosé. Again, rosés are just super easy to pair, super complimentary. Did you did you try it with the rosé? Yeah, I did. Butter, right? Yes. Yeah. Out of this world. Super tasty. The oyster, the oyster mushrooms do resemble an oyster consistency look. You know, it's it's a it's a mushroom, so it still has that earthy flavor to it. Um, the empanadas with the rosé, not so much. Still, uh, you know, this, this rosé is very easy to pair. It goes with it, but it wouldn't be my ideal choice uh, for the empanadas. But we're actually going to move on to the Sauvignon Blanc. Y'all ready for that? Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How's the food? Yeah. Oh, nice. I'm the only one eating salad. This is weird. So we have arugula and frisée, a berry vinaigrette that I created. Mm. Some blueberries, blackberries. Uh, I threw there some red wine vinegar, some blueberries, and salt and pepper here and there. You know, a little taste to it. Mm. Plantain croutons we put in there. Oh. Did you try it? <laughs> Plantain <That's> croutons. <laughs> The Caribbean there. Wow! 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 Yes. Y'all gotta try these croutons. Like that. This is this is this is something different. I'll it, the croutons, it's plantain. It's practically dessert. So the salad has a, a little bit of sweet and sour because we also I also added a little drizzle of reduced balsamic vinaigrette which is very good, it's in the sweet side, and with the arugula that has that tarty um, kick to it, and the flavors together, they match pretty well. I've done it before, and I thought that would be a, a great choice for your cho for your show. It, it, it is a great salad. Um, again, the rosé was uh, a no-brainer with a salad like that. You have the fruit, the plantain croutons, uh, the vinaigrette uh, work, uh, work very succinctly. That's a very big word for me. <laughs> so for our second wine of the day, we are doing the Matua Sauvignon Blanc from Marlboro, New Zealand. Um, so Sauvignon Blancs, the best Sauvignon Blancs come from climates that have a little bit of uh, frost to it, a little bit of cold to it. Um, Oregon makes good Sauvignon Blancs. New Jersey even makes some decent Sauvignon Blancs because of its mix of cold weather. Um, but New Zealand, uh, I mean, and I've never been to New Zealand, but all of the pictures I've ever seen looks like, 
you know, like a, a, a screensaver for your computer. You know what I mean? Very mystical, very enchanting. I believe New Zealand, especially Marlboro, is a major, major go-to for Sauvignon Blancs. Uh, if you go to California wines, American wines in general are just generally uh, bigger bodies and creamier, similar to ourselves as people. Um, so New Zealand has more of the tropical flavors. You'll get some grassy notes. You'll get some uh, pear and apple, melon. Um, so let's talk about this wine a little bit. We didn't get to talk a whole lot about the rosé. So you want to, so that you want to get close enough to get a, a, a very good smell of the wine. So um, let, let's talk about what we're getting. I, I'm definitely getting some melon. Um, any, what, what was anyone getting? I'm getting some tropical flavors. What are citrus. We, citrus. Yeah, pear. yeah, yeah. Yep. I was getting pear. Yeah. Pear, pear. pear major pear, right? Mm -hmm. Super like uh, super ripe pear. Um, I'm getting some like fresh cut grass, a little bit like a little bit of a grassy park vibe to it. Very outdoorsy, right? Mm -hmm. Dry, <laughs> dry, definitely on the dry side, right? Yeah. Let's uh, let's take a sip. Definitely dry. Um, I got, I got, I got, I have to try these wines with these empanadas. I can't do a whole one though, so. If anybody wants to help me with one of these, yeah, take that ahead. All right, boy. Take us I got you. I got you, bro. It's amazing. It's, it's better with this one than this one. Mm. Than the, uh, it's amazing all the flavors that I remember as a kid uh, when I first bite into an empanada. It's all there. Better than the uh, delicious. Better than the rosé for sure. Rose. Well, this one's sweeter than the last one, right? Yeah. What did you say? Um, mm -hmm. yeah, there's definitely like I, I would say more tart, mm. right? More, more tart, more um, because it still has a dryness to it. That's fantastic. That was really good. The empanadas with the sauvignon blanc out of control. And finally, the rice pudding. Let's cheers to the rice pudding. Cheers. 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 Salute, salute. <laughs> so again, a, a very traditional um, dessert in a Hispanic house is the rice pudding. Yes, Tell us absolutely. about it. This is rice pudding, again, from my um, my background. I grew up eating a lot of rice pudding. My mother used to make an awesome, awesome rice pudding. It has yeah, some cinnamon, some nutmeg in there, some cloves. And, and the acidity from the Sauvignon Blanc breaks up. The, uh, breaks up the consistency of the pudding, so it it, it goes it also goes really well. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not one of these shows. I don't I don't. If I say it doesn't go well, I'll take the L. I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say that I fucked up. I, I, picked the, I picked the shitty wine. I pick a ton of shitty wines. But that's how you learn. You know right. what I mean? Try or never. No, this is really good. Now I cheated on I cheated on the Sauvignon Blanc. I know I knew what I was doing with the Sauvignon Blanc. I'm this is the first mind. time I tried it. I had my kids taste it. Very, very my good kids value. Are sweet people, sweet little people. They very love good value. Sweets. The Matua Sauvignon Blanc goes for like 12, 13 bucks. Very affordable. Um, big shout out to our sponsors here at Bottle Cup. Thank you, Bottle Cup, for having us. Uh, yeah, the Matua Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, you can't go wrong with that one. Um, how you guys like the? Did you, got, did you try with some of I did, yeah. Period. I like how it's sticky, kind of yeah, like an Asian so. kind of style yeah. rice dessert. That the is Caribbean, fantastic. Which is a bit more soupy, milky. Wow, it's really good. Oh, that's really good. I just tried it. Mm -hmm. I mean, the coconut. Yeah. The coconut really yep. stands out with it. It's yep. delicious. It really does. And the pairing is really great. Does. Yeah, I never would have thought of that pairing. It's no, really never. Delicious. No, never. Would. And this is how this is how you learn about wine, guys. It's trial and error. I can teach you. I can tell you whatever you want me to tell you. But until you're actually experiencing for, it for yourself, that's how I fell in love with wine because I found that perfect wine with that perfect steak. I found that perfect wine with that perfect chicken dish. And before you know it, you're experiencing so many different layers of flavors that you've never, that you can't experience anywhere, anywhere else except but with wine. Cuz, thank you so much, man. This was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
motivations, everybody. Check them out, all right? Thank you. So next guest we have coming up, I am super excited about. I am a lifestyle brand, um, and cannabis is a part of my lifestyle. Um, along with wine, there's so many different parallels, right? I know you hear, you hear where I'm coming from. And, and, and there's so many different parallels. It's a shame, you know, and I don't like to get political and all that stuff, but it's a shame that um, we haven't been able to enjoy something that has been a part of our culture for so long. You know what I mean? Forever. We also live in a time where mental health is a very serious issue and a very serious topic. And someone who de has dealt with that within my family, mental health is a serious issue. And we all have questions with the cannabis culture coming to what it is and us not having the full education. We rely on people like our guest today who is joining us. Miss Sonia Singh, a New Jersey medical marijuana psychotherapist. Please. I was and the trying food for. Is delicious. The food is very good. I've been trying to work with you for so long. Finally. I know we finally caught up. <laughs> once, once again, I have manifested another incredible relationship. So, um, yeah. So medical marijuana. So you have your own CBD line. I do have it in my own CBD line. Can we talk about that? Sure. Okay. Uh, let's talk about CBD in general. Please, please. Um, so I work with medical marijuana patients in the state of New Jersey. We teach them how to use medical marijuana effectively and safely um, so that they can incorporate cannabis in their life and not experience any of the um, side effects that possibly could be associated with cannabis. I am a cannabis advocate. Um, I love cannabis. I started a cannabis-based program in my private practice um, to help support New Jersey's mission to get patients their, their medical cannabis so we could open up the, uh, the floodgates for the program so that we could steer way towards recreational law, which, you know, we're making strides towards that every single day. My CBD line, so CBD in general is the um, medicinal compound that's found in the hemp and the marijuana plant. So it's the medicinal compound that helps alleviate stress, anxiety, chronic pain for users that are using medical marijuana um, for chronic pain. They're really looking to use the CBD compound that's in the plant. Um, so to avoid any of the psychoactive effects, the high that's associated that a lot of people like, right, with the cannabis plant, a lot of people just isolate and use the, the CBD. So um, I have my own CBD line to help people incorporate the medicine into their lives that, you know, might not necessarily want the high. In the state of New Jersey, PTSD and anxiety are the eligible programs. Um, I'm sorry, eligible conditions for the program. Marijuana strains, that's sativa and indica. Um, for sativa strains, sativa strains actually help alleviate some of the symptoms related to depression, and clinical studies have proven that. But unfortunately, depression is not a, an approved eligible condition in New Jersey, but PTSD and anxiety is. So I help people that do have PTSD or anxiety gain you know, an eligible diagnosis so they can get qualified into the medical marijuana program. I want to draw some parallels to weed and wine, okay? So, like there is white wine, that's a little bit more bubbly, that's a little bit more social, whereas red wine is a little bit heavier, kind of tends to make people sleepy. Like indica. Like indica. Yeah. Like an yeah. indica, right? Yeah. Explain what an indica no is. Knows. <laughs> the effects of indica and sativa are different. Um, sativa is more of like an uplifting strain, where, and I compare it to caffeine, coffee. Like sativa is like coffee where um, indica is more of a sedative. So indica, you know, can leave you in a very relaxed state. Um, so for people that have anxiety, that want to promote a relaxation response in their body, they're better off using indica strain. Now what about growing regions? So you can grow grapes anywhere in the world pretty much, right? But a Chardonnay grown in California is not, as, not the same as a Chardonnay grown in South Africa. Is, that, is there a parallel to that with, with weed? Of course, agriculture plays a big role in you know, how um, the quality, obviously the quality of the strain. Um, so the big trends nowadays, so indoor weed, of course, indoor 
cannabis is always um, you know better quality than outdoor cannabis. Um, but the outdoor quality is all based on you know the agriculture and where it's grown. Okay. So when you there's like Maine is a legal cannabis state. So in the the, the state of Maine, um, you know they could legally distribute recreational um, marijuana. So in a state like Maine where it's cold, you're more likely to get indoor strains mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're not able to sustain outdoor yeah. cannabis. Yeah. And you say strains, now those are different types of... So they have different flavors, they have different effects, um, different looks, right. um, but overall, each different strain gives you a different effect. Just like in wine, each different type of wine makes you feel a little bit different. Right, and, and just like there's different types of strains in marijuana, there's different types of grapes in wine. You know, there's the Merlot grape, the Chardonnay, so on and so forth, just like there's many different strains that provide many different things. Um, now let's talk about health benefits. It's known that a glass of wine is actually good for you, especially a glass of red wine. You know, obviously everything in moderation. Um, I drink two glasses just to be safe. <laughs> let's talk about the, um, the health benefits of cannabis. Well, there's so many, so it's hard to kind of discuss in one conversation, but, Fair enough. Um, you know, for thousands and thousands of years. So I come from an Indian lineage. So in my country, um, ganja goes freely, and for uh, thousands of years, they've been using cannabis as a way to kind of medically treat a lot of different type of ailments. It's very, very hard to just talk about the medicinal effects. However, what we do know today is that it is a medicine contrary to popular belief where, you know, our society has been so heavily stigmatized on the negative connotations um, that has been perceived and projected by, um, you know, political side, society. Media. Exactly, right. for the sure. last hundred years or so. Right. Um, however, if we go back in history, this has been a substance that people have used holistically for a very, very long time to heal us. So there are a lot, a lot of different ways that cannabis can heal. It's not just one, it's not just 10, it's not just 20. Um, Cheers. did you Cheers to cannabis. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Surprisingly enough, I found out, that, you know, through my research, um, I found out that the, the Buddha, the Buddha became the Buddha through, you know, a uh, cannabis fast that he went, you know, he went on in the Himalayas for about two years, and this is how he went from being a um, a Hindu prince to the Buddha which the Buddha is practiced today in a lot of holistic... You don't say. Right. Oh, in a lot of holistic oh, therapies. Even, even in my practice where I teach people mindfulness and I teach people how to really kind of, um, you know, develop and instill a sense of inner inner peace, um, you know, cannabis has been doing that for thousands of years. It's a shame how this information is being suppressed. That's crazy. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, there is so much more to, to this culture. Um, that is being kept from us. Let's go into the red wine, huh? Let's do it. Okay. So this is an Argentinian Malbec. Uh, Malbecs are grown in the Andes Mountains of Argentina. It was an original grape that was used to mix uh, French Bordeaux. Um, but Malbecs didn't really grow so well on their own in France. So um, Malbecs made their way to Argentina and they started growing them in the Andes Mountains, high altitude. So very close to the elements, close to the rain, close to the sun, very pure um, elements coming onto the um, Malbec grapes. Also, you know, they're in the volcanic mountains. So whenever you grow grapes around, if you grow grapes near an apple farm, it's gonna take on some apple characteristics. If you take it, if you grow grapes next to a pig farm, it might smell like shit. But, so when you're growing uh, grapes in the Andes Mountains uh, amongst volcanoes, you're getting that, um, you're getting fiery flavors, you're getting gravel, you're getting rocks, you're getting smoke. This is a Lot 44 Malbec from Argentina. Again, like the Sauvignon Blanc, Argentina is a go-to country for Malbecs. Now you're gonna get some good Malbecs in um, several Latin American countries, South American countries, I should say. Um, Chile also makes very good Malbecs. You might get some decent Malbec in Honduras, uh, also Ecuador. So let's uh, let's give this a swirl. All right, we're gonna open it up, get it nice and comfy. Let's take let's take a sniffy sniff. 
That's not my line. I'm sorry I used that fucking word. <laughs> that's not that's not my thing. It's a cannabis show. I don't know why I said <laughs> that shit. Wrong substance for this show. <laughs> Definitely not wine terminology. No. <laughs> Never heard of this before. Quiet, Ron. Now, even when I have the wine in my mouth, I'm trying to seep in a little bit of air. That's how you savor the flavor. Uh, similar to like uh, when you smoke a cigar, you're not inhaling the cigar, but you're kind of moving it around your mouth, trying to hit different taste buds within your tongue and the, and the back of your throat. Yeah. yeah. Really smoky and oaky. Oh. Yeah. Actually, well, you talked about how we go camping. We yeah. Perfect. Those smells it and tastes scents, like that. But there, yeah. Right. And I it, taste that. Yeah. Like yeah. You said it was something like roasted, kind of. Yeah, like a like a smoky kind of. Smoky. Yeah, yeah. I taste yeah. that. I mm -hmm. taste that. That's interesting because I don't think if you know prior to having this conversation with you, I think I would have just drank it and I'm like, ooh, good red wine. Like, right, 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 right. <laughs> not really paying attention to the distinct flavors mm -hmm. that make this wine as wine. Yeah. I, I I kind of just made it a game. To, to find these different, you know, to, to try and find these and, and, and train myself. <laughs> what do you think of it? I love it. Yeah. I yeah. love it. It's not over it's the not top. Yeah, because I yeah. can't do dry. Really. It's I not over like the top. It lets you know it's right. there. Right. It like lets you know it's there. The smoke's made, made steam in this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not as dry. Right. The smokiness doesn't overpower it. Right. You've got no, all that right. other flavor in there. No, really no. savor it. But, but you want to talk about you want to talk about outdoor cooking, yeah. barbecue. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean. The, you'll find a lot of resemblance and similarities in the wine to those flavors that come with your favorite barbecue uh, barbecue foods, right? Yeah. So I you feel like this is a good barbecue wine. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Chocolate and Malbecs um, go go very well. I taste. I I was actually gonna say I taste. Yeah, but like cacao, like pure chocolate. Yeah. Not yeah. Barbecue, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. There's definitely there's definitely that essence to it. Right. I mean, this is a dark fruit flavor. I wouldn't mm -hmm. consider this mm -hmm. like a, a red fruit flavor. Right. But uh, you know, Black some berry. chocolate covered strawberries mm -hmm. might have a nice little yeah. little effect with this. You know. You want to try out the rice pudding? Yes, I do. Yes, I've I do. Been, I've been the whole. It's amazing how good that is. Perfect. It's so yeah. fucking good. Damn it. Because the um, sweetness I'm missing. You know, the cinnamon goes right. nicely right. with this. Ties exactly. it together. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Exactly. Uh, so when I say, so, you know, we talk about spice and also in, in Malbec's, you'll get uh, often common is a black pepper, mm -hmm. right? But spice can also be cinnamon. Mm -hmm. It can be nutmeg. Right. Right. You know, it can be a baking, a more right. of a baking mm -hmm. spice Very as opposed to, uh, you know, a hot spice, a heat spice. Melody, what was your favorite uh, food item today? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Let's do food pairing. Food so pairing. wine and food. What okay. was your favorite? Uh, I definitely loved, I loved the um, Sauvignon Blanc uh -huh. with the uh, rice pudding. Just with the pear tasting against the coconut, I've never yeah. combined those flavors before yeah. and that was, that was amazing. I and, definitely want to try that again. Yeah, and it was really interesting with the acidity of the Sauvignon Blanc, how it was breaking up like the, the, the clumpiness that comes along with the rice pudding. Right? Yeah, the texture is really yeah. contrasted in a really nice way. I loved it. Yeah. Delicious. Bump. I uh, love the rosé with the empanadas, but then the Sauvignon Blanc and the little brisket little thing. Mm -hmm. Oyster the, mushrooms. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That for me, yeah. It, it, the, the, the oyster mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking <laughs> hate them. Mushroom. I'm not crazy about them, but today we just love them. Oh, I think they are so gross. <laughs> you know they grow from shit, right? <laughs> we all know this. Just make it short. With that being said, um, I mean, no, th these might have been, yeah, the oyster mushrooms, really yeah, 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 good call on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh? I gotta shine some light on the salad with the white wine, I thought that was really good, good yeah. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you something, those, those, um, plantain croutons, Which I'd actually that was a completely different there. experience. <laughs> it really took the flavors to a different right. level. Right. Um, what did you like? What wine did you like? The with white that? wine with the uh, with the, the with the Sauvignon yeah. Blanc. Yeah, the, yeah, the Sauvignon Blanc. The, and especially now, the spring is rolling in, mm -hmm. and summer as well. Sauvignon Blancs are a major go-to. Uh, your favorite pair of food and wine? The rosé and the mushroom crostini. Mm -hmm. That's what I feel like. You know, what I tasted that 
it's a good sign. Where can we find your products? What, well, tell us a little bit about your about your product line, please. Um, okay, so my product line could be found either on my IG through me. Okay. Um, so I'm the Happy Therapist on Instagram. Also through my website, which is Center of Inner Transformations .com, which is my outpatient mental health and substance use rehab, which is located in East Brunswick, New Jersey. Center of Inner Transformations. Com. Big major thank, thank you to Bottle Co. for having us once again. This venue. Uh, this venue is absolutely amazing. Vegan underscore innovations on Instagram. Thank you to the Happy Therapist at the Happy Therapist on Instagram. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Uh, my cousin, can, can I promote your Instagram? Oh, sure. At oh. Melanie Official? Yes. Melanie Official. Melanie Official. And <laughs> Jay Moravan? Yeah. Yes. I need to spell. Sorry, guys. At Melanie Official, at Jay Moravan uh, on Instagram. And, of course, my main man, Bump Pro. <laughs> at Bump.Pro on Instagram. You can find his music, Bump Pro, on all major streaming platforms. What's up, Bump? You got one more for us? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's pour it up. Everyone got some wine? Let's, let's get some wine, everybody. Cheers, everyone. It's time Cheers. to party now. It's time to party. I'm just a part-time lover. I was a part-time lover. I'm still a part-time lover. When you need it all of me. I'm just a part-time lover. I was a part-time lover. I'm still a part-time lover When you need it all of me Let me start by saying you was everything that a man can hope for Why didn't I plead when you decided to part? Where am I fooling when I only did half the tour? Always do, but I still get involved. Hey, so selfish in a way. I'll be planning to stay. Supreme propaganda. I follow my own agenda.